Hi guys and welcome back. And today we get on with painting some 28mm Napoleonic Hussars. So firstly my apologies for the infrequency of uploading videos. It's almost been six months, it's probably been a bit longer than six months actually, and just lots of things going on in my life and happily nothing terrible. Just all first world problems, but a lot of a lot of rooting around with the new house and land deal, which we've had a couple of minor setbacks with along the way, but we've managed to overcome those. And uh, in fact, it should all be sorted out and building should start in a couple of weeks' time from the time this goes up. So hopefully in about eight months' time, we'll be in the new house and I'll have my new hobby room well on the way of being set up and ready to rock and roll, and then that should start to increase frequency. But I've got a clever plan to try and combat the big gaps in between posting, which I will probably not talk about in this video, but you will see the beginnings of that in the next video. So last time we were together, I'd started on these Napoleonic Hussars, and these are some very, very old 28mm Hinchcliffe figures. And I'm not sure exactly how close to 28mm they are by today's standards. I think they're somewhere between 25 and 28, but um, close enough, I guess. And that only became evident when I had to buy some other horses. And their horses seem to be a lot bigger than you would think, but maybe they were in a good paddock. So what I thought I'd do in this video, mainly because of space available, and the hassle of trying to get an area set up to paint is I've done a few of the figures and a few of the horses and I thought we'd just do a deep dive into how I go about painting the, the hussars and the horses and basing them. So right from uh, the, the bottom up sort of thing and then the next time you see these guys, the, all 16 of the troopers will be done and then because I can't deal with things that aren't perhaps right, I managed to actually find some command team for these guys, which are four figures, which would take them to 20, but my head says there needs to be 24 figures in a unit, so I found four more of these actual figures. So I won't make a big deal about those in terms of a video. I might do the command pack. It's just a little one to preface the final reveal, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, that's what it's all this about, deep dive. So I've tried to get really close up uh, which has been a bit challenging with the setup that I've got so hopefully there's a mostly in focus video for you that will just show you how I go about doing it it's not saying it's the right way it's just the way I do it hopefully it might be helpful to some of you so the Napoleonic theme the Haladonian Napoleonic Hussars this is all uh, Gavin Booth's fault so I'll put a link down to his channel much better painter than I am of this stuff and he does everything so check him out well worth the look and with that let's get on with the show So I literally thought I would start from the ground up. So I found these. These were literally just lying around in the house. Adhesive skid protectors. So they're for the bottom of furniture that you're going to have on floorboards or, or tiles and that, I guess, to stop it sliding around. So they're almost identical to the traditional 28mm plastic with slotted bases that I think you know, the, the warlords and all those sorts of figures have. I use some polystyrene sheet, 0.6 thick, just to have as a base. And these fellas literally just peel off, and I didn't add any additional glue. Just press it down on the polystyrene sheet. Just do a bit of cutting through with the X-Acto. And snap it off, which is, I've discovered, a much better way to get a, a nice clean cut. And then with the snippers, just started to pair back. And so the, the reason I did this was, A, I wanted a smooth base. Now I'm not going to game with these figures. This is purely for my own amusement and, and enjoyment. So I didn't really want them sitting up super proud on one of those traditional bases. And if I just glued the metal base of the horse onto one of those traditional bases, that would be sitting up even, even prouder again. So my clever plan, which you'll see shortly, is to embed the horse's metal base 
into the cork top layer and have the plastic serve as the, as the bottom of that so it can't fall all the way through. These are some of the horses that I had primed earlier and just marking it out now on the little cork disc. Now in this instance I went all the way from one end to the other because that was the length of that base but there have been other ones where I've been able to have a little bit of cork at the front of the, and the back doesn't really matter. A bit of ASMR. Just using the good old super glue. You can push down for 10 or 15 seconds just to make sure they don't go anywhere. And then on to creating a little bit of terrain on the top of it all. So this is like five-year-old humble model filler. It's one of the first things I ever bought when I first got back in. And I'm working with basically just the stuff I can find that isn't in storage. So I haven't got a huge range. I, I bought all my paints with me, but not a lot else. So just smashing, smooshing, I think is the technical term. Smooshing that in first with a um, bit of a cut-off stick and then with that brush. And not fanatical about covering every micromillimeter of the cork because there'll be other stuff added onto that later on. But just to mainly hide the metal base of the horse's base. <laughs> So let's start with the horses and so starting a, a black horse with some black grey. And again, not being, you know, I'm just covering it, not being super careful and there's no great finesse or style involved. Using a bit of white grey next. This is a second horse. Black horse and a white grey horse. I also did a brown horse as well. Flat earth, paint that is. And that's just for the bases. And that's again just to get the initial covering coat down. There is the brown horse. So I made up three washes, a grey wash, a black wash, and this brown wash, all slightly darker. And that's why I didn't start the black horse as black. I think this is German black brown in a very diluted wash. And I think this is actually a German ticker black. So a lot of World War II themed paints being used on Napoleonic horses. But again, as you can see, look, not being super careful, just blushing it on and letting it, letting it find its place. In the, in the recesses. Now, with a little brush, so I can try to control it as best as I can. A little bit of dry brushing with a 
appropriately lighter, similar tone. And you can see if there's a few globs there that aren't uh, looking, and that was nice on the leg, but the one on the neck looked crap. But you can always go back and uh, sort those out. But I like, do like to try and go for a bit of a random outcome, so I'm not overly guiding. And a bit of um, flesh tone on the schnoz, starting to paint the belts and buckles in. I think that uh, footage might have been a little bit out of order here, so we or maybe we're saying, we'll go back to see, this is what it looked like, but this is how it got there. I'll claim that as a production um, style choice. So a couple of different pinks here. I think the rose pink and the flesh. Now look, I've seen other guys who paint 28mm Napoleonics in particular, and, uh, and their work's special, like it's just really, really good. And I'm not going to try and convince you that I'm anything other than a pretty basic painter of 28mm figures at best. And it's been a long time since I've painted anything this small in volume. Not if you call 16 in volume. But I started off with the premise that I just wanted to get them looking good without spending you know, an hour or two hours on each one. So the horses I smashed out pretty quickly, I think, you know, maybe two or three hours maximum to get all of them done. And painting in the reins and the rest of the tack, because the saddle and that comes attached to the rider's bum, so don't have to worry about that at this stage. And again, even 28mm, typical of my style, is careful but not fanatical, so I always sort of think, get the coverage you need to have. You can always come back and touch up if a little bit gets on the horse's hide. You can come back and touch up. And, you know, these are probably a bit brighter than you'd like, but knowing that there'll be another bit of a wash over those to darken them up, just don't care. Just take it. It's fun. A little bit of dry brushing along the base. And that's probably about where they land in terms of quality. So definitely not the best painted horses that you would have ever seen, but really easy and fun to do. And I guess for me, because the horses don't actually hold as much appeal to me as the figures because of the uniforms and, and things like that. So I just wanted to get them done well but not spend a huge amount of time on them. So I reckon these would probably be considered to be table-ready standard, but certainly nothing much more than that. So I found these 6mm dry tuft gamers grass little adhesive things. I use these a lot, and I really, really like them. And they're almost scale agnostic if, you, if you're careful. And I figured, you know, you can have some big tufts of grass going around, but I reckon they fit in pretty nicely, and I liked the fact they naturally fitted in with the colour scheme. So I just went around and tidied up the edges of my base, my little cork and siren bases, and call it good. I was pretty happy with how they came out. So you might remember this bloke from six months ago. He was the one I showed you with a very funny base-coloured horse, but had blocked in most of the colour. So this is my prototype for what do I want the uniform to look like. So we'll just run through the process. So they're all sprayed with some Tamiya Grey, and then initial move is to cover all of the areas that need a, a nice light white base. Uh, so that was mainly the saddle and the jacket that's flying in the breeze because they're going to be a uh, a very light blue. So I wanted them to have something a bit standout-ish and then I thought why not do the plume as well because the colours there some can sometimes benefit from a white base. 
So that's all them ready to rock and roll. And then the next thing I did was the faces. So starting with a base of brown rose, which I think was the thing I tried to explain when I was doing the horse's noses. And just splooching that on. And and I guess philosophically, my, my I like to get the faces done first, but I like to sort of work from the deepest recesses out so that you're not sort of going past previous work uh, as you get further through the through the painting cycle. So just mushing that in around the face area. And then coming back with a little bit of the lighter tone to pick out some highlights. And again, one of the things I struggle with at this scale is where to stop the effort because I can see this because I'm wearing my four times magnifying reading glasses, basically. Um, but when I put them down on the desktop and stand up and look at them from you know four foot away, I can't really see any of that. So you know, you can put a lot of work in for the microscopic, and and perhaps it's not worth the candle. So anyway. Onto the uniform to start off with, and just a bit of Prussian blue to kick things off. And that's liberally and, and somewhat carefully applied, but not again, not fanatically applied. Trying to keep away from the white bits as far as I can, because that's where the light blue will go. But again, not losing any huge amount of sleep over it if I can't achieve that. And then dropping a bit of the black grey into the same Prussian blue just to get a darker colour and mainly focusing on the trousers and the recesses to get a bit of shadow action happening. the sky blue so this is really mainly for the saddlecloth and the jacket i want to call it a palliace or something like that and i'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, people in the comments who can put me right on what that actually is technically called i could google it but it sounds like a lot of effort Is an artistic montage that I thought I'd put in to show we're moving now to filling in all the other bits. And it's also a new button I found on the video editing software, so I thought I'd like to see what that does. And then we're into the detail, so you know, it's. It's, for me, this sort of stuff is progressive, progressively becoming more careful. So, you know, again, and I think this is possibly what's going to be on my tombstone, careful but not fanatical. So just building up the, the layers and trying not to go in back past what I've done. But if I get a bit of overpaint or I make a blue and get paint somewhere where it shouldn't be, don't beat yourself up about it, uh, because you can always go back in and fix that. And again, if you batch painting lots of the same figures, you start to build up a technique that works for that particular figure in, to, in, in terms of the, the batting order of what bits get done in the best order. So the first two or three are a little bit experimental, and arguably then the worst two or three in the unit as you've started to refine your technique and you understand where you need to have the, the paint and, um, you know, the first few figures, you know, shit, I'm not even sure if, is that the rifle butt or is that the ammo box where there's one stop and where there's one finish? And I find that with the metal figures, there's a little less certainty in terms of the physical structure. And a couple of times I was painting something thinking it was something else altogether. Again, painted on eyes, don't, uh, don't do me any favours. But uh, when you, you always come back and have a look at it. So I just painted that buff under the saddle cloth. You probably won't see much or any of it at all. But 
just in case I didn't want it to have a shiny bit of metal in there. And then slowly working my way around and, and starting to refine the, the different parts and you know, the the white fur around the jacket or the whatever it's called that you'll tell me in the comments. Then again, you know, just being careful, not rushing. Now the figures took me a lot longer to do than the horses, of course, because the horse of course, of course, the horses of course. Hello, I'm Mr. Red. I would suggest that each figure probably took from start to finish a uh, pure painting time at least an hour and a half, I think. Or thereabouts. Maybe that maybe the first few were two hours. Uh, and the the last, you know, dozen were probably about an hour, maybe an hour or 20 minutes each. So, yeah, again, that's as technique refines and you get a bit of sort of process and batting order sequence of doing stuff. So I put down the white edging again on the saddlecloth just so the, the subsequent colours would be a little bit more vibrant. And here getting around the what what will be the unit colours, so the, the red and green, which is on the plume of the shako. doing my best to try and get in as close as possible bearing in mind that that can be incriminating because you'll get to see details and errors at this high level of magnification that you I, I swear to god you would not see in real life unless you had exceptionally great short vision which I don't so maybe it's what you don't know doesn't hurt you So now starting to get right into the sort of final stages of the detail. And I don't know what this thing is. I'm thinking it's some sort of map bag or whatever, but again, the, the Napoleonic aficionados, if you can tell me what I'm painting right now, if you can put that in the comments, that would be really helpful because I don't know what it is. I'm guessing it's a map bag, but uh, surely they don't all have maps. And the Heledonian crest. Putting some finishing touches onto the saddlecloth now with a little bit of red stripe. So it'll be a red and green striped edge. And again, don't panic at this stage if you see a great big globule of paint like that one. Uh, that was way too fat and didn't actually give me a green stripe in the middle. Because again, you can always go back. So again, I'm not too fussed about it. Get them down. Try and be try and be careful because you don't want to, you save time if you don't have to keep constantly going back. But there's always going to be a blue somewhere. So I figure. I'm going to have to open the green paint again to sort this out, and that's what I'm doing right now, just going back in with the green. And it was actually easier to split them by doing that than it was in trying to get them measured out right in the first instance. So maybe it's just part of the process. Not too fussed about it. Main thing is, are you happy with the end result? I was, I was pretty happy with the end result. And it's also on mass, repeatable and duplicatable. And then I thought it just looked a little bit dull, so I just get a little bit of gold embroidery I'm going to call it along the edge of the of the saddle cloth as well to give it a more finished look really in the home straight now just starting to do a few of the remaining little belts and uh, connection points 
And quite honestly, some of these things I didn't even see in the initial stages. It's only as you sort of, it's almost like process of elimination. Have I painted everything that looks raised? And, uh, oh, what are those raised things there? Well, they must be some sort of straps. So again, not necessarily. So if I haven't convinced you I'm not an expert, you uh, you beyond convincing. So that's it. That's pretty much most of it all blocked out in reasonable carefulness. I think I might have noticed there that I hadn't done the stirrups and going back in to do those. And then give it a jolly good spray with a gloss varnish. And gloss varnish so it can take a very careful highlighting process, which we'll have a look at next. Now, I love a well-weathered 35mm figure. You know, slosh on some dust and some dirt and some grime and get it all over the place. Uh, but as a style preference, I like a relatively clean-looking Napoleonic figure. So you know, rather than just sort of stick these in some dunking grime or um, pouring a, a bunch of, uh, of wash all over them and letting it settle into recesses, I really, very really selectively picked out the the brightest areas where I wanted to put some shadow in the recesses, which was really just the the jacket and a, and a couple of places in the on the saddle, and pick out some of the darker areas uh, that might need a little bit of highlighting, and but but fundamentally have a relatively pristine figure. So these boys are not going to look like they've just come off the battlefield. They're going to look more like they are heading out to the parade ground. And that's a style preference. I think you don't... Well, I don't see that many super weathered up Napoleonic wargaming figures uh, when I when I look around on other channels. I mean, look, it might be an interesting thing to do. I think if I was doing Napoleonic figures in, in 135th scale or 54mm scale as more of an action-style diorama, which is something that's sort of interesting to me, then yes, I would probably do that, and lots of black gunpowder marks and, and the like. But for this sort of mass display purposes, neat and tidy is the way to go, I think. And so that's it, a spray of dull coat to take all that shine away and then back into a couple of the metallic places with just a dot here or there just to give it a bit of a gleam, but not too much. And yeah, look, really happy. So it's been an enjoyable process. I wish I had more time and a better setup to get stuck into them in more detail. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the perhaps the, the more close-up look and approach and philosophy and just really good to connect back with you guys again i've missed getting videos up in the process of doing the videos but more than anything i really missed the feedback that i get from you guys and and your comments which i really enjoy responding to so with that i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you might have got something out of it look forward to getting the next one out which i'll optimistically say won't take me six months to do and uh, also sharing what this unit looks like when it's all finished, which I'll just beaver on with now. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And a um, couple of video suggestions there for you. Uh, and also looking forward to reading any of your comments for those of you who do so. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Catch you in the next one.